So my uncle uh, Louis was from Cape Breton, and uh, back in the early 60s, that was not the place to be if you were a gay man. And uh, so we had moved to Southern California, so Uncle Louis was like, man, I should come to Southern California. And that was my mom's younger brother. And uh, so when Uncle Louis came, moved out, we, uh, our, my mom and dad were really strict Catholics, and so we would always, like, we all knew Uncle Louis was gay, but nobody would talk about it, and then, like, he would bring a different boy and friend home every Christmas, and so they would be like, Mom, Uncle Louis has a new boyfriend, and my mom would go, it's not his boyfriend! <laughs> and they'd get mad at us. So, <laughs> it was just funny, man. Everybody kind of lived in a state of denial. Anyways, Uncle Louie was my favorite because he would take me to the Hollywood Bowl to see all these great concerts. And he took me to see Ella Fitzgerald and Carmen McRae and Sarah Vaughan. And about the time I was six, he took me to see this classical guitarist from London named Julian Green. And I just remember being raised on Elvis Theater. And he took me to Godspell and uh, to uh, Jesus Christ Superstar. He took me to Hair. Like, he took me to every Planet of the Apes movie. <laughs> and, uh, anyways, I just, I always loved Uncle Louie. And uh, anyways, we lost him a couple years ago, right? So I, uh, I went out to visit him because we knew he was only gonna be around another week. And I drove, canceled some dates and drove up to see him in Los Angeles. And uh, he was hooked up to this machine. And I, was, I just said, Uncle Louie, I just want you to know how much I love you and thank you for all your help over the years. And he goes, boy, he always called me boy, never called me Steve, boy, get me a cheeseburger. <laughs> so, so I said, all right. And then I looked at the nurse that was standing there and she goes, well, there's a Burger King down the road. And my Uncle Louie in his snottiest gay man voice said, I don't eat Burger King. So I got on my iPhone and I was like, best cheeseburger. And there was a place called Slater's 5050, it like had these Third pound burgers or something that kill every animal on the planet. And it's like, <laughs> I go, does this sound good? It's a twenty-five dollar cheeseburger, Uncle Louie. I want to do anything just to make him feel good. He goes, that sounds great. Get me it rare. So I bring him back. He's hooked up to this machine. He's so skinny, and I'll never forget him. He ate the whole cheeseburger, and like blood was dripping down on his face. <laughs> and the next day, I had to go play a show, and I call my parents. They go. Uncle Louie died. <laughs> I said, Mom, I killed Uncle Louie. <laughs> I thought he was cheeseburger. And she said, no, we were with him. He was really happy. So, and he was talking about that cheeseburger. So. I thought that was kind of funny. Um, but I got to tell you, man, he turned me on to so much music, and it was just a beautiful thing. You guys would have really liked Uncle Louie because... Uh, he was just a soulful guy. And I don't use the word genius a lot, but Uncle Louie was a genius. And he could play anything on piano. He was so musical. And he knew everything. He was so well-spoken. He read everything. Whatever you wanted to ask him, any type of current events, anything, he was up on, up on it all. And so I was lucky to have somebody like that. And so I often feel sorry for people that don't have a gay Uncle Louie. You know, when I meet them, I, like maybe they weren't exposed enough to the arts and maybe that's the problem with a lot of the hate in the world. More people need a gay Uncle Louie that takes them to see Ella Fitzgerald and all this great stuff. So I remember when he took me to see Julian Bream, I was there and I just went, Uncle Louie, I, I, I used to stutter back then. I go, I, I, I really want to learn the third song Julian Breen played. And Uncle Louie goes, boy, it's too hard. You'll never learn it. And so, please, Uncle Louie goes, well, you want to take classical guitar lessons or banjo or piano? Classical guitar, Uncle Louie. <laughs> so our first classical guitar teacher came over to the house, and I'll never forget, he knocked on the door. And I go and I answer the door, but I was too scared to answer it, so I stood behind my dad's legs. And the teacher came in, and it was 1966. And he walked in, and the first thing I remember is, I was just up to his pant legs. He smelled like mothballs. <laughs> and he came limping in, and he said, sorry, I have a wooden leg. I lost my leg in World War II. And then he sat down, and then the second thing he did when he sat down is, he had a glass eye, and he, said, <laughs> and he popped it out, and asked me if I wanted to hold it. This was my guitar lesson, the first lesson. And I was too scared to hold his eye. 
And I'm really bummed about that because I feel like I would have had a better vision on the world. Like the way in my life. I never held the eye. And then he popped it back in. And he was like this really horny old man who wanted to get together with my mom, which I found out later. I was like, why did he quit coming to the house? <laughs> and my mom ended up trading him in for this blonde named Cindy Lamb, who I had a crush on. But I'll never forget that first teacher because he was an interesting dude and I wanted to learn to play Elvis Presley songs because I loved Elvis Presley, right? And we had an old guitar in the attic that had three strings on it and I would run around banging on it like I was Elvis Presley singing at the top of my lungs. And the first thing the teacher did when he came in, he sat down and he pulled the Mel Bay Guitar Method book out of his weathered leather briefcase. And he took his wrinkly old hands and he restrung the guitar and showed me how to string a guitar. And then he said, we're gonna learn how to play Down in the Valley. And I'll never forget the feeling of my heart sinking because the song was so slow and plodding and boring. But I learned how to play down in the valley and I practiced really hard. And then I said, I gotta learn this song that Julian Brain played. And I learned the name of the song, it was called Adelita. I wanted to learn it to show my Uncle Louie. And that's what I realized about myself. Whenever somebody's told me I couldn't do something, it's really made me gear up and buckle down and I will do anything to prove them wrong, even to my own detriment. And so, <laughs> I learned this song by the time I was nine, and then I forgot I knew it. And then recently I remembered it after Louis died. I remembered that I'd learned it, and I went, whoa, maybe there are angels out there floating around, and Uncle Louis kind of slowly sprinkled some sort of angel stuff in my head, you know, and it made me remember it. Because out of the blue, I remembered the song, and this is the song that I learned when I was nine. And so this goes out to Uncle Louis. All right.